Right. Morning, everyone. Uh, morning to our students online as well. Sorry. Right. All right. So let's begin this session with a word of prayer. Uh, let's pray and then we will start uh, our discussions. Father, we thank you so much for this time that you've given us, Lord. And even as we've come, come together to study, and learn your word, pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to our hearts, minister to us, Lord. Uh, teach us, lead us, and guide us, God. You know, we pray, God, that everything we learn will minister to our hearts, God. Speak to us. And Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But uh, nobody can hear. It's not here. USB is not here. Audio audio. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if everyone heard, uh, did everyone hear, was the audio okay for everyone else? Okay, okay. All right, so let's begin with today's session. Uh, last class, we looked at uh, uh, the responsibilities of a pastor, right? And uh, uh, we took up points from First and Second Timothy and Titus as well. Uh, for those of you who uh, missed the class, I've, I've posted the the notes for that chapter on the classroom uh, on the stream. So uh, please, you can go ahead and uh, just download it, go through that. Right today, we'll talk a little bit about the rewards of the pastor. Right now, when we look through scriptures, we see that the Lord Jesus teaches us all through Old and the New Testament. We see that our God is a God who is just, right? Grace is free. Rewards are different, right? Uh, I always say this. Apostle Paul's reward and somebody else's reward, maybe a, a person who is just um, a few years in the Lord, the rewards are going to be different, right? Paul writes about it in the book of Corinth, in his letter to the Corinthians. Uh, let's just read that portion. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10 onwards. Yes, would anyone like to read that? First Corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 to 15. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. Yes. So here Paul is talking about if we study the book of Revelations, he's talking about the judgment seat of Christ, where each one of us as believers will have to stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ. And it's also known as uh, the judgment of rewards, right? We'll be rewarded for what we did. And Paul says here, if anyone builds on a foundation which is not a strong foundation, not on the foundation of Christ, his works will be tested by fire. And so he brings this whole uh, representation, presentation here. He says, there is gold, silver, costly stones, those three, and there's wood, hay, and straw. Right? So it very clearly shows us here that the Lord Jesus is a God who will reward us. Now, this is eternal reward. 
right? This is rewards that we will stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ. We will get rewards. We will be uh, crowned in glory and all of that. Now, many of us, you know, we can't wait till we go to heaven, right? Rewards is something that we all like. We all want to be rewarded, right? Imagine somebody, you know, he's practiced all his life, an athlete, and he comes first in 100 meters, and they say, hey, good job, and don't give him anything. Right? He's not rewarded for what he has done. It's it's not going to serve the purpose, right? You know, he may be encouraged, but for him to feel that, hey, I've, what I have done, what I have gone through is, and this is the reward for it, it's a different joy. Right, so each one of us in ministry uh, will be rewarded, rewarded in our ministry, rewarded in life, in our personal life, the way we look after things, our, our, uh, you know, how we handle what God has given us. All everything is accounted for, right? Being good stewards of what God has given. Now, today we look at what are the rewards of a pastor, right? Now, as a pastor, many of us. Uh, know that it is it's not an, an easy task. Paul writes to Timothy, he says, you have chosen a noble task, right? Now with a noble task, with responsibilities comes more responsibilities. With responsibilities, we need wisdom, we need strength, we need to understand how to deal with people. All of this is there, right? So I'm just going to put out a few points. I know nothing is on your notes. I will post the the document on the stream so you can uh, go through it but if you can make notes as well go ahead and do that right okay what are some of the blessings or the rewards for pastors in ministry right uh, now remember we know that pastoral ministry is difficult right initially when we start off maybe it's exciting we're encouraged you know especially if you're pioneering a work you're really excited. You say, oh man, I'm going to build this. I'm going to take this to another level, right? Uh, but over time, things will change, especially in ministry. You know, people will start accusing you. People will start backbiting. People will have unfair criticism with you. They'll be suspicious. They'll be, they won't have faith in you, right? There are different things, different situations that you will have to go through, right? Uh, initially, when I joined, I said, oh, man, nothing like pastoral ministry. All of them love each other. All of them care for each other. We're all in this beautiful world. But soon I realized that's far from the truth, right? Um, we must understand that people, we all are different, right? Ministry is about people. And so when we are pastoring, shepherding people, people are different. If you say something to somebody, Right. If you bring, so for example, a pastoral, uh, a pastor can say, "Hey, uh, if you if you don't mind, can you uh, be on time to church?" Right. This is an example, right? Now, two things can happen. There are, and there are two kinds of people. One will say, "I'm not coming to church." Well, the other one will say, "Okay, pastor, these are the challenges I'm facing. I will try to come on time." Right. Two, two things. Now, how will you deal with that? Right? There will be people who say, I'm not coming. You said you told me to come at eight. I can't come at eight, so I will not come. Right? So pastoral ministry is not always a bed of roses, right? Meaning it's not always very easy and everyone will listen to you. No. Right? But there are rewards. And the rewards. Of course, we've seen here we, there are eternal rewards, but let's look at some of the rewards that we see in the natural. And it's wonderful. It's so encouraging to see these rewards. First one, the reward of studying and learning the Word of God. As pastors, you and I have this great joy of getting into God's Word and studying God's Word. Now, I'm not saying others don't do it. But you and I have a greater responsibility. We have this greater weight that we carry. Hey, I need to minister to people. So I need to get into God's word. I need to share. Right? There are days you will have to take your Bible and sit and read and go and meditate in God's word and just ponder on the truth of God's word. Go back. You'll have, there are days you'll have to go 
look at history, geography, everything to be good ministers of God. Now, it's not a burd burdensome thing. Right? The more we study God's word, the more the blessings of God pour into our life. It's a joy. Yes or no? Right. Uh, the question that I can ask is, how many of you are joyful to come to Bible College? <laughs> right? Joyful. Oh, God. oh, Bible College today, I'm going to learn. Right? And that should be the attitude. I mean, today I want to learn. There should be this joy. There should be this eagerness. Right? And in pastoral ministry, it is a big responsibility. But with that responsibility comes the reward of God's word getting into our heart. What happens when God's word gets into our heart? We are transformed. We are changed. It, it, the word exhorts us and sanctifies us. It does so much to us. Now, we are preparing so that we can teach people. But we sometimes forget that what it's doing to ourselves. It, it begins to minister to us. All of a sudden, we feel, oh, thank you, God, for speaking to me. Then all of a sudden, we begin to realize, hey, I'm, God is giving me the wisdom to handle situations, to handle people, right? Especially as, as, as in the pastoral ministry. Remember, initially, people may not, you know, even if it's normal things, right? Like, oh, should we put the stage here? Should we put the speakers here? Initially, people will not do that, right? People will not come and ask you, should we do this? But over time, they will come and ask, right? Uh, so it's not only spiritual, but there are also practical things, decisions that you have to make. When we study the word of God, we must consider it a privilege to read God's word and minister God's word. It's a joy. Yes or no? Yes, right? It is a joy. Yes. Yeah, just repeat the question for the uh, when we are talking about this joy, we should find joy in God's word. Is there will be any time like for a pastor or for you, like uh, you you don't find that yeah. in any instance because yeah. of our situations? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so that's a good question, right? So do we at times don't feel joy? Definitely. See, we are human beings as well, right? Uh, you know, getting up, praying. It's not always like we feel, oh man, I'm so happy and joyful to be in God's word. No. But here's the thing. We've got to push ourselves, right? We've got to tell ourselves, hey, whether I feel God or don't feel him, whether I see the answers or don't see the answers, whether I'm in a good situation or a bad situation, I, as a pastor, as a leader, I have to push myself. To come out of that comfort zone, out of that zone of feeling, you know. Uh, so, for example, last week I was very tired. I said, oh man, who's going to get up again? Three, four o'clock in the morning. Who wants? Let me just wake up late. I, I have, everyone will want to get some good rest and just do nothing. Uh, but that feeling was like, okay, God. Uh, you know, uh, you know I, the way you feel, right? I'm sure all of us feel that. There's no joy. I mean, it's not like there's no joy, but then everything is just, it's like one straight line. Okay, get up, pray, go, teach, do this, do that. Right? And it's a natural thing. But what is happening is the more we go back. So today, I was in no mood of, you know, praying. Right? I got up, I was just like, okay, God, thank you. I hardly, you know, went to, like strong in prayer and all of that. Uh, but just a regular prayer. But what I know is that even in those regular prayers, just these words that come out, uh, you know, meditation of God's word, there's something that is happening inside us. Right? So we have to push. Right? Uh, see, situations will come. Challenges will come. Right? Ups and downs will be there. In the pastoral ministry, people will come up with all kinds of things. Right? Uh, you know, there's this one person, uh, not here in when you we were in Mangalore, this person came up to me and said, uh, see, I, I think you have to work on your speaking. You speak too fast. Now, he's only two weeks in church. Straight he came up and told me. And was, at first, I was taken aback, right? You know, uh, it's just two weeks in church when he's coming in. Uh, but I realized that, hey, if it's something that I have to take, I have to take, right? There, so there are times when 
not everything goes the way we want to but it, for me it was like 2 3 weeks how can he say that to me right huh? if you know sometimes you, uh, you know what all i've done, <laughs> done you know you do so much i'm there for the church and how can he say that to me right so it was very difficult when, for me to pray and seek god during that time but we push forward and we say okay god it's okay and, and the more we do that the more the reward is for us the more the reward is for us right we're able to forgive we're able to let go of our things that we're holding on to so first one is studying of god's word two is watching god work over a period of time meaning seeing the fruit of your labor now when we look at a farmer and he sows the seed he's not he's not very happy oh i've sowed the seed he's happy when he sees something coming out of that seed right so paul again he he talks about it uh, he says one person sows another person waters and god makes it grow right so watching people watching the fruit of your labor is one of the greatest rewards that you and i can have as pastors right I remember this one time i don't know if i've shared this example now uh, we were in manglo and it was a, we were very maybe 10 of us right and um, there was this young boy who was you know uh he was there was something wrong in his attitude and his character and he was you know always uh doing weird things right so his mother was very concerned and we were only like about 9 or 10 people in church right so they uh, they were not part of our church because they were more confident with the regional language so they asked if you can just come and minister and i remember uh just going there and this boy would not meet with anybody nobody if anyone comes home he'll go into the room and lock the room he would wake up at 2 3 a.m and have dinner he will cut paper and keep it on the table in the night he light candles and sit right he will write things on the wall right uh, so there was some demonic kind of an oppression that was there right nothing he's not spoken to his father for years staying in the same house all he does is in the room so obviously when we mother called and when i went the moment i rang the bell he went into the room i said god how can we minister to this guy and, and over time you know we we kept going to the house and praying and eventually one day he came and he sat he came and he sat out and his mother was surprised right uh, and then he said why are you coming here every time i don't want you to come here so i said see your mother's calling i'm coming i will continue to come right but over time we started you know just talking and it was very casual right about guitar and he liked guitar so i said i'll take guitar classes for you you will come and sit he said okay so i, I said how many days in a week you're free he said i'm free every day i'm not doing anything <laughs> i'm not in college i'm not studying i'm not doing anything i'm free every day so i said okay i'm coming every day but i'll come alternate days and then we start going there and over time you know everything changed he only cut his hair his mother didn't say anything i didn't say anything he cut his hair got a good himself a good trim he said i'll come with you to church so he came with me to church one day he came he sat he went back home but over time god just changed his life and that is such a wonderful feeling to see the fruit of your labor it is so rewarding that one person never forget him my entire life right now there was no preaching right i didn't do evangelism and all right i didn't say oh this is what god is saying nothing just seeing god work in his life right and there are plenty of times when you know we were 10 people i would you know, i remember telling the church hey put 60 chairs right there were the place could fit you'll have seen the church in mangalore right maybe about 80 people and i said put 60 chairs so we were 10 of us so one day all these 60 chairs will be filled you know and seeing it happen was such a rewarding thing right i, I think some of you sent some photos and 
and our church folks still send me some photos of the church and it's such a joy to see that right the most rewarding thing i remember i know how mangra was in that 10 people three people won't come and they'll say i'm not well or uh, you know mangra six months it rains so you can't do any ministry for six months heavy rains right and the next six months you, you whatever you have to do you have to do in that six months right and uh, they'll say it's raining or uh, you know some of them genuine reasons there were times you were like three four people in church there were times it's just me and my family sitting there we have I have preached to them, we've closed and gone home. What's the attendance? Three. One adult, two children. Right? And gone home. But now to see it is so rewarding. Right? So in pastoral ministry, to see the fruit of God's work in our lives, in the ministry, is so rewarding. Right? Uh, now, here's a very important uh, thing to remember. Fruit takes time. Doesn't happen overnight. Yes? Right? So we must be patient. Walk along with God. Right? Continue to look to God. Keep our focus on God. Three is to see people grow in faith, grow in maturity. Right? So when in the pastoral ministry, you'll have people from different walks of life. Right, so some of them may know all the entire Old Testament, some of them may know the entire New Testament, some of them may know nothing. Right, so you have people from different spiritual levels. Now, a wonderful reward is to see a person grow from being a baby in Christ to becoming an adult or becoming matured in Christ. That's such a rewarding thing. Right? So you have somebody who's just become a believer, a young boy, a young girl, a youth, he comes into church, he doesn't know anything. Hey, my parents were Christians, I'm a Christian. Right? I believe in Jesus, but he doesn't know things of God. And so as a pastor, when you are able to minister, you're able to disciple, mentor, uh, see people grow from where they are to where they become, such a rewarding thing. Yes, I said this before. If you, you know, imagine you become a CEO of a company, and then you go to your school. If you go to your school, and your teacher says, "Hey, what have you become? CEO? Really? Oh, should we? Oh, I remember you. You did everything wrong, but now you're a CEO, right? It's so rewarding. Now that teacher, you." give whatever amount of money you want, you give whatever gifts, it's not going to take the place of the joy. It will not. Right? It will not. Because that reward is something, oh man, my student has become a CEO of a company. Right? And um, yeah, so that is so rewarding, right? Let's look at the next one. Seeing people radically changed right uh none of us uh, are are any more or less deserving of god's love right uh there are times when we are reading the bible when we're talking of the things of god and we see people changing we see people growing uh people you know come into church with different kinds of baggages Right. Now, again, just like how people are on different spiritual levels, people come with different baggages. Right? Not all of them who come to church have a holy, holy attitude or holier than thou kind of feeling. No. Everyone, right? Everyone have baggages. Right. So if you look at it, churches will have people who are divorced, people who are single, people who are addicts, who are on drugs who are smoking, who are drinking alcohol, uh, people who are going through a divorce, so many things, right? But seeing lives radically changed is a beautiful gift and a beautiful reward that you and I can see, right? Remember this, again, uh, I'll, just share, I'll just keep sharing a few testimonies. This young couple, right, uh, they could not have a child. 
So for many years, uh, you know, the, the husband, the wife was always looking to God, saying, God, you will bless me. And uh, but the husband was very angry, very upset. And he was, he was, a, you know, all his life, he was in church, serving the church, worship leader, uh, been there for everything. And then he got married. And now this has happened. Like the doctors have said, you have to, uh, you, you will not have a child. So he was very upset. He said, I'm not coming to church. I don't want anything to do with this. I've given my life for church. Finish work, come, you know, be there for church for anything. But now, what is the gift? And so he was very upset. Now, is it, an, is it a natural thing? Yes. Right? It is natural. Because this boy, from the time he's six, seven years old, he's in church. He's been serving in the church. Monday, you know, every day, life group, he'll go with the guitar. Bible study, he'll go with the guitar, right? And these are they were all working. So for everything he's there, and now God is not there for me. It's a natural feeling. He's so hurt. So, so you know, I remember just telling him, you know, this is what God can do. I know what you're going. Now, it's very difficult when they already know, right? But what happened was uh, she, the wife would keep coming to church and she would keep listening to God's word. And then over time, over time, he started coming and he started listening. He started being there, but he wouldn't volunteer, right? So he's coming to church. And just before we left from Mangalore, uh, maybe a month or so, he came, the wife came and said, we have a gift for you. And they gave this box. Then that was the pregnancy test. I'm saying, I'm pregnant. It was such a joy and seeing this boy this young man just come to a place of understanding how god is what he does he was radically changed and, and there are many many examples this way seeing the fruit of people's lives changed is a beautiful re reward for us again fifth one watching god answer prayers everyone are praying we are praying congregation is praying Everyone in the congregation are praying. We're praying together. We're praying alone. Some of them are crying and tears and pain and struggling. But seeing God answer prayers is a wonderful reward for us. Next one, seeing a new generation of leaders coming. Now, can you think of this? You know, uh, uh, I want to share this. A lot of uh, a lot of them um, in our in our pastors pastoral team are they were all in children's church. Right? So if you if you know some of our uh, our children's church pastors, they were all children's church. Can you picture that? They were in children's church in APC. Now they are children's church pastors. And what a joy it is, right? Uh, they were. Uh, I remember some of them were uh, now few of them who lead worship in different locations. They were all in children's church. I remember them small, right? very small. Some of them would come uh, after school, the school uniform, they would come and uh, you know, uh, come and meet us in the church office. Or see them, school uniform, mm -hmm. fifth, sixth standard. So they're all leading worship, youth leaders, some of them the pastoral team, right? And it's such a joy to see that, right? It's such a joy to see the next generation come up. And you all are the next generation, right? Next generation who will take on the word. And it's such a joy to see right? God just working. Um, and so that's a wonderful reward. Watching these, uh, this new generation do the work of the ministry uh, is a reward again. Right? Uh, the reward of just watching them and helping them, mentoring them, uh, equipping. Right? Ephesians 4.12, Paul says, to equip the saints for the ministry right? is, is a reward in itself. Right? Now, remember that you and I as pastors or leaders, our number one responsibility is to raise up other leaders. Look at the next generation. Look at raising up people who can take your place, right? So if you go back to your church and you've learned about 
Uh, I think many of you know about media, technology, and all of that. We've got to raise up people for that. Is there a need? Yes. Right. Or you you have youth, youth in your church. So you'll be able to raise up leaders who will take on youth ministry, become youth leaders. Um, and when we do that and when we see these young people doing the work of the ministry, it's a fruit in itself. Another point is watching God do the unexpected. The pastoral ministry, God does the unexpected everywhere. But one of the beautiful rewards is to watch God do the unexpected. He opens doors. He brings in, to, uh, you know, supernatural providence, supernatural doors being opened, right? And we can testify of that. And right? God doing such wonderful works, uh, unexpected things, things that we didn't expect God can do in the church, right? Uh, it could be, you know, in terms of church growth. It could be ministering to people. Right? It could be the signs, wonders, and miracles. It could be God's providence. Right? Oh, just so wonderful. I remember this long time back. I became a believer, and then we were spending a lot of time in prayer. So I was thinking, God, uh, what, what is this? What am I doing? I'm just praying. Nothing is happening. I'm just praying. You're just listening. Do something. Is something that is so I wanted to uh, you know build a room, a prayer room. Uh, and so I, I didn't have the funds, right? So I said, God, you provide for the funds. Right? And you know, we prayed for many, many, many months, and eventually God just supernaturally provided it. And then when that came in, I remembered those times where we, you know, sacrificed, prayed, seek God. Asking God. So, so it's very important for us to expect these unexpected things from God. Expect God to open big doors in your ministry, in the pastoral ministry. And when we expect it and we see God doing it, it's, such, it's so rewarding. right? The day you all will stand on the stage, graduate as students, is such a rewarding thing for us. So rewarding for us, right? And uh, and next one, Second Corinthians five nine. Let's read that. Second Corinthians chapter five verse nine. Mm. So the next one is God's pleasure is to reward us. It's not that God is stopping us. It's not like God is saying, okay, you do all of this, only then I will reward you. Now, first Peter, uh, let's read the first Peter five and four. I I really like this verse. First Peter. 5 and verse 4. First Peter 5 verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Mm. Like what? Yeah. Like you will what? receive, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory, an unfading crown of glory, which will not fade away. Now what greater reward is there for us than this? Right? You have the natural rewards of all of this. And then you have the spiritual reward, a crown of glory that will never fade away. Right now, these are just a few that I've put down. There are plenty more. Right, once we step into our role of the pastoral role, how many of you are here? Those online as well are called for the pastoral ministry. You know you're going to become a pastor, or you know that, yeah. Francis? Yes. Okay, when I saw Francis the first time, I saw pastor written all over him. I just knew you're a pastor. Anybody online? Uh, you know that God has called you to be a pastor. 
Okay, Shiv Kumar says, raised his hand. Yes, that's wonderful. Right. Now, even if it's uh, something that you, you know you're not yet put on paper or you're not yet thought about, uh, right? Or you feel that you know sometimes we feel that we are not equipped enough to start. Uh, but if you feel that you want God is calling you to start, uh, you know it, it's always good to look to God and start. Right, start doing what God has called you to do. Anyone else? It's faster, uh, Nikhil. What about you? <laughs> All the pastors, wonderful. Anand also, yes, good, good. I know that uh, I know that Chira is uh, already serving and ministering in his church. That's wonderful, wonderful. So. Yeah, so it's wonderful uh, to that all of us step into our roles. Now, even as we step into this role, it may not be smooth as we like it. God may ask us to clean chairs first. God may ask us to do the smallest of things. Uh, it's just being faithful and allowing God to step in. And we just step into the role. And I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, you know, as time passes by, we will see the rewards that God is uh, definitely, definitely, uh, you know, in my personal life, when I look back and I think of it, uh, there were challenges, there were ups and downs. I thank God that God has placed people around us to help and mentor and to teach us to, you know, sometimes like what Anand was saying, just feel weak and weary, just feel like giving up. Oh man, uh, do I really need to go through all of this? Right? Uh, but the rewards are much, much, much more satisfying. Uh, and when you look back, you say, oh, my, I thank God for letting me go through these situations or letting me go through these learnings. Right. So those are some of the rewards. Um, and I'll post whatever the points that we have discussed here on the classroom later on today. Uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Next class, we'll uh, look at the last portion. Uh, and then I will give you a couple of assignments that I'd like you to do. One is... Um, um, you know, writing about uh, maybe your favorite uh, evangelist, uh, your learnings, your favorite uh, maybe a pastor and a teacher. You can take your time and do one of each, and that will be your midterm assessment. You can just post it. Uh, uh, yeah. Past, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. So you can choose one person and anyone, right? Uh, no, no, no. So one, one as a pastor, one as a teacher, one as a, yeah, all three, and right? So, uh, and that will be your assessments. Okay. Yeah, that'll be both midterm and final. Yeah, you can if you want to. Right. Uh, Okay, so I'd like you to do that assignment. Those who are online, if you have any questions, you can ask. So the assessment, I'll just repeat. Uh, you can choose one person, anyone right now uh, who's alive, who's, and those who have passed on in church history as well. Uh, a pastor, write about you know their uh, ministry and your learnings. You can also write about the downfalls, things that they have. Uh, you know, they may have failed in that you can learn from, right? Not to pinpoint their mistakes, but some things that we can learn from others' mistakes, right? So, so one is about the pastor, one person who's a teacher, and uh, one of the evangelists, right? So, uh, can do that. And um, next class, I'll we'll go through the last portion of this, then we'll have these assessments. You can you can write it, take a picture and upload it. Um, yeah, yeah. So so I'll put it on the classroom as an assessment. Um, you know, no need to uh, present it because there's quite a few of them online as well. So we may not finish everyone, uh, but you can just look at it as an assessment. So you do the assessment. Post it on, you can even write it, take a photo, and or you can just do it on a Word doc. And put it up. All right. All right. Any questions about the assessments?
or anything else yes uh, how uh, we can be sure of that god called us to be a pastor or a teacher or to be an evangelist how we can be sure of it uh, some yeah. of the guidelines where we can take them as okay mm. that helps us to come yeah so that's that's something that over time that comes right so for example uh, i've said this before so your gifts and your calling go together right now we may have many gifts and we may be wondering hey what is my calling right? am i a worship leader am i a teacher am i evangelist am i a prophet right now it is not you know, all these these you know the fivefold ministry it is there for what for the edifying of the body of christ it's good that we know okay we know that i want to do this right it's good when we recognize it okay god has called me to start a church when we when we know it inside it's good but many a times god will take us through a season through this whole uh, pathway of surrendering to him understanding his ways and during along the way he will open doors See, for example, for me, you know, I always thought I'm a worship leader. I never thought I'd be anything else. So, I started off with worship leading, but over time, what happened was, suddenly, they said, "Hey, uh, you teach in Bible college." So for me, it was like, "Oh man, I thought I'm a pastor." Uh, sorry, I thought I'm a worship leader, and now, and then after that, they said, "You teach in the church, preach in the church." right so again it all didn't happen immediately so for 2 years i was leading worship then another door opened then another door opened right so now as a pastor or as a child of, as a as in ministry we may be doing multiple things right so don't it is very important don't be focused on okay this is my calling right so if you look at apc right something that we do is we don't say okay uh, no only pastor you can be pastor but still you have to go and do even the smallest of tasks because it's it's just that's what that's what we do right so don't be focused on okay is this my calling just go along with what god is doing if you're interested in media and technology right and you're leading worship and then you think hey what is my calling am i a worship leader am i into media and technology god can use you for both right he can open a door for you he can make you a pastor and be a media as a pastor you can teach media and technology to the to the church raise up people you can do so much right so we come out of this box of oh i am only a pastor only an evangelist because those especially uh, early 1990s you know that that whole mindset was there no i'm only a pastor i'm going to be the evangelist because this is what i'm going to do and i'm not going to do anything else so we come out of that right So, for example, as a pastor, they say, "Why don't you go and teach missions? Go and teach." You can't say, "No, I'm a pastor. I will not go." <laughs> you have to go. You have to do it, right? So it's just just being open to how God is guiding you. But there are times you will know. You just know, hey, uh, you are more inclined towards it. Right? See, some people may not be inclined towards evangelism, but you have people who are very inclined towards it, right? So we know that. okay that's the calling we need to write about a particular pastor teacher and evangelist yes neena one pastor one teacher one evangelist write about the person can you use the mic for the assignment pastor yeah so do you have like uh, what what would you say uh an expectation of like how much words or how do you want us to write it yeah you can write how many words you like <laughs> i will read it <laughs> no problem okay like just their life story yeah their life say. story uh how they started ministry how did it grow uh where what what happened what is the impact of the ministry um and also if there were downfalls pitfalls uh that they had and you know some of the pitfalls that we can avoid and uh, so just feel free so it should be more of a learning right uh, even as you do it don't look at it as an assign oh assignment i should get 
95 on 100. Don't look at it that way. Look at it as a learning, right? So even as you read, learn, right? Let it go inside you, right? Due date, Nina, uh, I'll put the due date on the classrooms. Uh, when I put the assignment, I'll put the due date. Right? Anything else? OK. Yes, Francis. Pastor, you said like uh, pastoring in the church is not an easy thing. Yeah. So people come with the different, different, different things. But like how to handle very easy, mm. like, not to get an anger yeah. in that mode. How to get a number one, don't take it personal. Right? Don't take it personal. So number one is don't take it personal. So there will be people who will come and tell you you didn't do this, you did this, you didn't do that, all of that. One, don't take it personal. Uh, the mistake we make is we take it, how can you tell me that? You know how many years I'm a pastor? 10 years. Right. So we take it personal. right? So never take it personal. Uh, and even as people come and share, look, look at yourself. right? OK, is this something that is going to help me? Or is there something that, so if somebody comes up to me and say, you're speaking too fast. I have two choices. I can say, hey, you don't tell me I'm 10 years in ministry. Or I can say, no, the point of preaching is everyone should understand. So if I'm too fast, nobody will understand. So it's a good feedback. So I have to make sure that I speak, right, that I speak slowly, with clarity, that people understand. So don't take it personal, number one. Two is when you are giving suggestions and when you are bringing correction, don't People will respond in different ways, right? Remember, you cannot control people's emotions and the reactions. You cannot control. Now, you may have to say, OK, guys, we'll try to come to church early. Right? Uh, OK, sound and setup team, can you come a little more early? So last, just a couple of weeks back, uh, I spoke to the media team. I said, hey, guys, 7.30 is getting a bit late, because by the time we fix the projectors, test it, test it on the you know, speaker, making sure the announcements are played. It's almost becoming 8 o'clock. And 8 o'clock prayer should start. So I said, media team, come by 7.15, 15 minutes earlier. Right Now, I don't know if they liked it, they didn't like it, but I can't I can't keep thinking, oh, they. I said it. Of course, I've said it in a good way. I'm saying it for the benefit of the church. Right. So they may like it, they may not like it, but you cannot uh, you know, uh, depend on their reactions. Right, so what you have to do, you have to do. Eight o'clock, eight o'clock. Right, so don't um, go by what people react. Right, so if you're looking at what is beneficial for the church, that is priority. The mistake we make is we think, oh, people will. Uh, it's a new church. You no, know, people will. People will leave and go. But next year, next year we'll talk about urban church planting. We'll learn more on that, right? So don't don't worry. Uh, Whatever decision you make, make sure you do it for the benefit of the church. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, see you next week. God bless.